Okay, uh, it's my pleasure to introduce our last speaker of the morning session. Uh, we're just a little behind, not bad. Uh, but Professor Alfred Kotzo, who's been working on privacy issues for quite a while. And before that, a lot of people might know of his work in personalized computing or user adaptive and adaptive systems. And I also learned that Alfred has uh, received a very prestigious award from the German government, the DAAD Lifetime Achievement Award for Academic Achievement. Uh, so a very rare award. Okay, Alfred. Thank you very much. Uh, I would like to report on a large project here in Bren Hall uh, in the area of privacy in IoT environments that is being funded by the DARPA Brandeis Initiative. And this initiative starts out with the observation that there exists already a burgeoning landscape of existing privacy technologies. You find a couple of them listed, but if you look, uh, there is hardly any real world deployment of them as yet. For instance, uh, differential privacy has been invented more than 10 years ago, but there are hardly any practical applications around. Even worse for uh, secure computation that was invented more than 15 years ago. And the goal of this DARPA Brandeis initiative is now uh, to create real world test beds in which these privacy technologies can be trialed and results reported to the research community. Um, three test beds are being funded one in mobile computing one in information sharing workflow, and one in the Internet of Things, IoT, and that's our testbed here. UCI, uh, together with uh, Honeywell, develops a testbed for IoT-based privacy-preserving pervasive spaces, TIPAS for short. And as you may know, Honeywell does many things, and among others, they develop building management systems, and that's why we partnered with them. And <coughs> universities and uh, industries uh, work with us, develop privacy technologies that we integrate uh, in our test bed. Uh, Internet of Things, you have already seen these nice pictures. Uh, there are downsides, privacy related. Uh, at least for two reasons. One is the sensors that track people, collect certain pieces of information, are barely visible. So people n don't know that they are being tracked typically. And also, uh, even though the information that is being collected seems kind of innocent, there have already been quite a lot of studies that show that over time, if lots of such information is being collected, all sorts of facts can be inferred about people that many would see as being privacy intrusive, uh, specifically individuals' activities, behavioral patterns, and also location tracking. So IoT is quite problematic from a privacy perspective. Um, for those who do not know the test bed yet, it's uh, our own school building. And this is a multifunctional building consisting yeah. both of offices for faculty and administrators, uh, of, of labs, and there's also all sorts of classrooms around <coughs> and inside the building. And there are several uh, <coughs> hundred people who are residents here, but on top of them, uh, several hundred, sometimes thousands of visitors come to Brand Hall for a short period of time. And we are gathering data in Brand Hall uh, from all sorts of sensors. We have a couple of sensors inherited, so they were already built into the building from the onset, specifically temperature sensors, HVAC sensors, heating, ventilation, air conditioning, Wi-Fi access points, 
if Wi-Fi is on on your smartphone, you're going to be tracked today. Uh, <laughs> surveillance cameras, uh, Bluetooth beacons, uh, also plug monitors, uh, so energy meters. Then uh, residents in Bren Hall can sign up their smartphone to our tipper system and then we can access data from sensors on the smartphone. Then we have a couple of uh, special purpose sensors like for gas or humidity. And then we also get data about the activity on various desktop machines across the building. So we collect quite a lot of information. In parallel, we develop apps uh, that make good use of this information. So for instance, there is a concierge app that helps visitors and residents of Bren Hall uh, find facilities and find people uh, in Bren Hall, specifically people that they have in their contact list or in their calendar. And then we have an application Noodle uh, that helps arrange uh, meetings and participants of the meeting can see the location of each other and kind of can predict whether the meeting will start off in time. There's automatic reminders and this app can also record the meeting. And as you can guess, uh, functionality might be a little bit privacy invasive. <laughs> there are some other apps, uh, more for building administrators. So an app that shows the energy consumption in various areas of the building. And this can be correlated with occupancy. And we are uh, developing all sorts of apps continuously as a matter of fact, starting tonight and continuing over the entire weekend, there will be a, the second Tippers Hackathon held <coughs> where undergraduates and graduate students uh, can build new apps and the winners will get very nice prizes. Here is a high level overview of Tippers. Here is the core. <coughs> So sensor management, data management, data collection. And applications can communicate with uh, tippers through APIs. So we have APIs where sensors can send data. We have APIs where observers, like individuals in the building, can send requests like where their colleagues are located currently, or where analysts can request data to do statistics. And most importantly, um, we have everything is stored in a database management system, and we have APIs by which we can plug in privacy technologies uh, that our partner, partners in industry and in uh, academia develop. So for instance, uh, one company uh, that works with us has developed a secure data man management technology. And we can use that to store <coughs> TIPAS data uh, in a secure manner in the cloud, even if the cloud is untrusted. Where another partner has developed a differentially <coughs> private database system. And we can use that to store uh, TIPAS data. All requests are channeled through tippers, and therefore we can intercept them and modify them in a possibly privacy-friendly manner. So for instance, if a building administrator requests data uh, that will be visualized in an occupancy <coughs> heat map at a level of detail that would allow the identification of individuals, we can intercept this request and uh, send a differentially private response that does not allow for the identification of individuals. An important part of tippers are policies. 
uh, that cover the storage, the capture, the processing, and the sharing of data. And those policies can both apply to infrastructure devices, like surveillance cameras, but also to users individual devices. And they can both be defined by building managers. So a manager can say uh, surveillance cameras will only be on during weekends and after hours. And they can also uh, control uh, users' devices so that smartphone cameras will be switched off uh, in certain areas of the building. From a privacy perspective, uh, also users can define their own policies, so like that they don't want to be tracked. And I'm now going to show you uh, this in a short scenario. Users have different privacy preferences and Tippers allows users to specify those preferences in so-called privacy policies. The Tippers IoT environment will enforce these user privacy policies. Tippers uses CMU's IoT technology to inform users about building policies and to learn users' privacy preferences. The first step is to inform the inhabitants of the building about the information captured by tippers. For that, Bob, the building manager, defines this information through the Internet of Things Resource Registry, or the IRR. We're building an infrastructure that will enable resource owners to declare the presence of their resources in different spaces, along with the privacy practices associated with these resources. What data they collect, for what purpose, how long they retain that data, to what extent they aggregate or anonymize that data, and to what extent they have settings that they're willing to make available to users. The IoT Resource Registry enables system administrators to register new IoT resources and modify the descriptions of existing IoT resources such as IoT applications, services, or virtual sensors. All right, so the building manager registers sensors now, and it takes a while, we jump ahead. configurations. Mary is a professor at UCI's computer science department. Today, she is scheduling the thesis proposal of her PhD student. Mary uses the Noodle application to set up the meeting. She includes information, such as the room where it will take place, the time and date, participants, including John, an external member of the CMU, and documents, including a preliminary draft of the thesis. Also, she selects different policies regarding the meeting. For example, the video and audio should be recorded, but the document should only be available for participants. On the day of the thesis proposal, John arrives in DBH. The moment he gets close to the building, his smartphone notifies him about tippers. Along with this technology, we're building privacy assistance that will reside on people's mobile phones initially, and that will enable users as they roam around to discover relevant registries, query these registries, and find out about resources deployed in these spaces that are collecting data about them. The privacy assistant displays the presence of the location tracking functionality, as well as the location sharing service available to people who are in Bren Hall. John uses the newly discovered app, Concierge, to find a room where the thesis proposal will take place. For that, he searches the room and concierge displays its location on the floor plan. He also gives information associated to the meeting. John follows the directions of concierge to reach the room. He discovers in concierge that there is a coffee machine in the floor and decides to grab a coffee on his way. <laughs> the thesis proposal is about to start in five minutes and Mary wants to know if John is nearby. Concierge also enables residents of the building to find others. Mary uses Concierge to find John. She realizes that he has been in the coffee room for a while now. Mary calls John and tells him that the proposal is about to start, and there is no need to stop at the coffee machine because there is coffee ready for him. John realizes that the information captured by the building can be used to track him. He's not <laughs> 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 John notices through the privacy assistant the availability of an opt-out setting. 
He's not terribly comfortable making his location available to others on campus and decides to submit an opt-out request via his privacy assistant. The request is forwarded to tippers and that enforces the new policy. Mary is still using concierge to track John. However, tippers is now taking into account John's privacy preference. So, concierge shows that John is somewhere in the first floor. <laughs> John finally reaches the room, and the proposal can now start. No, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so uh, I think I stop here. Uh, you see, we are very nice to our students. Not only we give them prizes, but also we develop, faculty develop systems that allow students to hide from them. <laughs> Thank you very much. <laughs> Okay, we have time for some questions. <laughs> Turn your phones off first. <laughs> <laughs> so, privacy anonymization stuff, often uh, there have been a lot of examples where companies anonymize stuff and then later it turns out that there was some problem with anonymization and people were able to reverse it. Have you had anyone trying to do the reverse of a attacking it like a hacker and say, okay, what can we get out of the data after it's been anonymized? We can the anonymous, we know it, uh, we promise not to do it. And there's <laughs> virtually no protection against it since location in a building is very identified. If someone is in the faculty office for an hour or two, well, that's probably this person. If someone, etc. Mm -hmm. yeah. So yeah. location information is very uh, identifying and with external information that you have about people's offices. There is no way uh, to prevent it. Yeah, so there is no technical solution. <coughs> That's why we promised we have a, what's called an institutional review board, and we promised to them not to. Do it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. One frivolous, one serious. Looking back, one question is frivolous and one is serious. I'll mm -hmm. start with the frivolous. Looking at the footage, you see that John left his mug <laughs> and the machine. Is there a provision yeah, in the exactly. program to remind him? <laughs> 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 and, and the other one is in serious. <laughs> in your experience with dealing, what are the basic barriers in adoption of the technologies? I was looking in legislative and regulatory environment, such as uh, United Kingdom has provisions for weak encryption? Or is it more of the cost? Or is it more of the personnel issues, training and things of that nature? Uh, both questions can be answered very easily. There is already, uh, there is already technology that you can stick on your mug which will alert you when you leave <laughs> yeah. it in the classroom. <laughs> Maybe we'll integrate it in the future. Yeah, it's useful. Uh, the sec answer to the second question is all of the above and much more. Okay. Yeah, so it's a huge problem. It will be a huge problem for decades to come. I'm very confident about that. Uh, and we will slowly approach solutions only very slowly. So basically we're looking into need of education beyond the engineering realm or the right. computer mm -hmm. science yeah. and also deal with the yeah. public policy, school and so forth. Yeah. Which means now interdisciplinary type of yeah. program. For instance, now for the first time we have a class here uh, on uh, usable privacy and security mm -hmm. where we have both students from computer science and from informatics, which is more people oriented. Well, uh, why don't we take the other questions in private um, <laughs> over lunch, and uh, we'll thank Alfred, but Debbie's going to have some announcements, including about lunch, but thank you.